Okay, so there's like two to three things I'm about to explain before getting the tutorial. The first thing, there is an example video you'll be seeing after this one. And this will focus on the whole entire 30 minute tutorial, okay? And the second thing, there's not going to be an intro because it just takes forever to upload with my intro. For this tutorial specifically, there's no intro, sorry. So, just go ahead and check out the description to my channel up here. And again, this tutorial is my own version of the force field effect. The actual Fantastic Four video featured a different type of force field, and that is based off a tutorial I watched. So if you want to follow that one, go ahead and check out the description below. It's about a 40-minute tutorial. That is another reason why I didn't want to do that, because I didn't want to do a super long tutorial. This is like my first 30-minute tutorial. But anyways, I'm going to stop talking. Go ahead and check out the tutorial. Hope you guys like it. Let's just go ahead and get started. So press Command N or go to Composition, New Composition, and we're going to title this Force Field Creation. Now you want to make it bigger than your actual comp size, so I'm going to keep at this HD version. And basically what I'm going to do, press Command X so I can copy that, but basically what I want to do is scroll over to here, and let's just say that I want to, you know, maybe go from here, just maybe trim down it just a little bit so we can work on that. Or, yeah, trim it down. Now, basically what we want to find here is see how long we want the force field to last. So, it starts about 11 seconds, and it goes about 5 or so seconds, okay? So, what we'll do again is command new, and we'll make this, um, let's just say, 15 seconds. And you press, you know, okay. And so you see here, if I press command K, I see my settings are 640 by 426, because I filmed off my computer, so the resolution and file size is you know, it's smaller, but the reason why we're actually creating a bigger comp for the force field is so that we can do some mask and scaling, which I will explain a lot more later. So let's go ahead and get started. Press Command Y or go to Layer New Solid or right click down here. We're going to keep it at a black solid, but we're going to title this Force Field. And press OK and make sure it's at comp size. Then go into Effects and Presets and type in Fractal Noise. Now, the fractal noise, there are many different um, fractal types we can use. I sometimes like to use dynamic as a way to create my energy effect. If we keep it at basic, we can still create that nice energy. And basically what we want to do is go just a bit. So I'm going to scale it up to about 70. So we have this. And I mean, you can copy this exactly if you want to, or you can make your own. But the contrast, we actually want to make um, darker because these points, the black points here, are actually going to be the brighter ones. So actually, if we keep it, tone it down to maybe, if, yeah, if we make it up to here just a little bit, then we'll get, you'll get the idea. And for the brightness, we'll want to make that just a little bit darker or brighter. So let's just mess around with this just a little bit. Maybe at 15. Okay, well I decided to go to negative 20 to keep that contrast up to so see here and stuff. And so basically we're going to go out and if you see here you have this okay now this is the sub offset so you can keyframe that and stuff like that to make it look cool and stuff but we're not going to mess with that so for the overflow let's make it to clip so it renders out faster and stuff like that for the sub influence we can keep it the exact same as sub scaling 
Now for the evolution, since we made it like this, we want to keyframe it at the very beginning, go to the end of the comp, and we're going to hit 3x and then 180 degrees. The reason for 180 degrees is because it's not going all the way around, and it's also a little bit slower within this time rate. You don't want it to be fast, and if you hit U, you can see your keyframes, and you also don't want it to be a little slow. You want your energy effect to be really cool and stuff like that. Of course, you can change the evolution options, but we're not going to do that. Now, of course, we have this effect. It looks very, very good. And what we're going to go into here and type in CC Vector Blur, or you can find that on Blur and Sharpen. We're going to zoom in here just a little bit, and we're going to start either by 5 or 10 just to get our energy type effect. And let's go here. Now you can see that the quality is really, really bad. So in order to change that, we can just scale it down just a little bit. And if you zoom out, now of course the more small the scale. So sometimes if you mess up on that, like how I did, I just like to scale it down a lot to about 20. So then I can actually see where I need to, you know, fix. But I mean, this also, this doesn't really change the, the solid setting a lot. So let's just keep it at 60 so we have that good quality look. Let's go back to our vector blur. So this is a good portion right now. As you see here, the energy is like that. And of course, he, you see here, you can also use that to make webs and stuff. Let's go at 15 and just see what it looks like. So this is more of the effect we're actually looking for. There's a lot of energy going on, and if we make sure this is highlighted and we scale it up, then you see here that the energy is really good. So let's just leave it at 100 for now. And so let me turn it to half res so that we can, you know, edit faster. But if you see here, every time you go up, then you see that um, the evolution is changing it. For the angle offset, let's just offset it to 5. For the ridge smoothness, we'll hit that at 2. Map softness, we'll turn that down to 10. And like so. Now, of course, we can't really change the mode because we don't have a background layer. But that's fine. And this is what we want. Now, we want the actual sphere. So we can either use a CC sphere, which will make a 3D ball type shape. And so let's just go test that out. CC sphere. Like this. And if we, for example, create a new camera, make it 28 change the saw to 3D, use the um, orbit camera tool. You see here that even though it's 2D, that it's actually not, you know, um, yeah, it's actually it's just still a flat surface. So we can fix that with the rotation so that it is actually you know, so if we hit C here, and we go to about the side, so we can start to see changes, we can rotate it just a little bit. Rotation will just make it look a little bit better. If we go to the light, light intensity is fine, but if we go to the shading, you want to make sure the ambient is at 100, just to keep that brightness, but we can also go down to about 50, not to make it too bright. And that's fine. Now, of course, the reflection map is on the force field. We can mess around with that stuff later, but the radius, we can change that. Let's just keep it at 200. And for the rotation, we hit R. Make sure that's nowhere. If we rotate it back, we see that we have a perfect place here. Just let me straighten this out.
And so what we're going to do is go into the radius, scale it up, and we have a sphere. Now, of course, because I'm not moving the force field around, we don't need to have that background feature, so we can have it like that. Now, if I turn this off, we can also, you know, go into the mask tool, make sure it's turned on lips, double click, and we can also edit that. Now, this is actually a much faster way of editing and stuff like that, but, you know, let's just turn that off and turn back the CC sphere on. Now, what we're going to do is take, um, take off the camera first of all. We're going to highlight the force field, press command shift C, title this pre-composed, pre-composed, um, sphere. We're going to move all attributes into the composition just in case we need to edit anything. Um, leave all these other things unchecked, hit OK. And what we're going to do here is then go back into our main comp. And this is the exact part, scroll forward just a little bit. So about here, where we want the sphere or our force field to actually come on. So the force field creation, if you hold shift, it will drop it exactly where we need it, which is right here. And let me change that to half res again. Of course, all of it will look better. And you see here, now, if we zoom out, that because this comp was bigger, we can scale it, and if we mask and feather it and stuff like that, then it won't make a difference. Now, of course, let's make this scale right here. There's no transparency, so you have to go into the mode. You can do a multiply, which will give some transparency. Um, darken, I suggest not using, that one look good. But you can use add, which gives that, you know, look. Screen also works, gives tone sound a little bit, but let's just keep it at add, okay? Now, this is the sphere, and so we can see a lot of stuff going on. So let's go hit T on the keyboard and turn, tune down the opacity to about 50% maybe about 45. So we see here that, you know, he moves around and the evolution is caused by this, so it's making that energetic look. But we want his body to, like, this part of where the force field is acting towards, we want this to be brighter than the actual force field to show some effect. So first of all, let's tune up the opacity just real quick. And to fix that, we're just going to go into effects and presets and type in curves. Now, for the curves, we actually want to make it just a teeny, we actually want to make it, um, just a little bit darker, so there's some time lapse over there. And what you're going to do is actually add another CC vector blur. So now that we have a pre-comp, we can do another CC vector blur, causing the energy effect to be a little bit better. And you see here, we already have that, but the ridge smoothest, we want to tune that up to 5. We want it to be smooth. Angle offset, let's hit it at 15 to make that good. Now, of course, we have a perfect sphere here, and we don't need to tune down the opacity. So that works very, very well. We have this force field effect, but the edges here, you see, you know, aren't really showing that force field. So, here's a quick tip. All you have to do is press Command-D or Control-D. You have your duplicated area. Turn this one off, then what you want to do here is solo the sphere, and basically we're going to um, go into this sphere circle mask, and if we actually hold the, down the command or control button while doing it, it'll make a mask outside the sphere. So what we actually want to do is just make it around here so it's covering the edges. So, let me try that again. Bring it out. So we have the whole sphere. Take out the edges just a little bit. Here, I'll be right back so that I can fix this mask real quick. Okay, we're back. So I created a mask in the center, and all you have to do is go into 
the mask and find where it shows this little mode right here and hit subtract. That will create a hole inside it so this will be actually the outline and the reason why we're doing this is because we're going to create a brighter outline for the um, force field itself. The reason why we want to do this, maybe add a little key from here, is because we want to give that more of a energetic type look, but at the same time we want the force field to be shown. Of course, you know, we edit it and stuff like that. Now what you want to do here is um, unsolo it so we can see, and maybe actually solo it back on. Hit F on the keyboard to feather it, and I suggest when feathering this, use 10 to 20, so not too much feathering or else you'll get this, for example, if I hit 100. But, I mean, if we do 100, we get a little, you know, inner look, but let's hit maybe do 50 on the feather, just to see. Here, unsolo it just real quick. Okay, we have that. So, unsolo this, then take off this curves effect add a, another curves and what we're going to do here is actually brighten this up this one is going to be the brighter one and if we turn the other one back on and we go hit opacity and tune it down just a little bit maybe to about this much and you see here that we have you know the outer lining of our energy field now, of course, we can add some more effects to make it better and stuff. If you add a color correction by going to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, typing in another curves. Now, of course, you can use any color correction tool you want. If you tune down the darkness, you get more of the energy and you can see it. A cool thing, I'll keep this on so we can work low. So before we get going, after this tutorial is done, before we, you know, finish up and stuff, um... What we're going to do basically is uh, create a distortion in here so that it's more of that ripple type effect. So let's go into the beginning of the energy, okay? Just right here. And what we're actually going to do is basically create a mask around here and use that as a distortion. So you, what you want to do is duplicate your footage and crop it exactly to the where it's right here, the energy is shown. And all you have to do is first of all turn off everything except for the color correction. Keep it on. And what we're gonna do here is create a mask around here. Now of course we can do that where we have the mask or what we can do is go into this mask layer, go to edit, copy go into our second movie layer, hit paste and if we turn this one off we have this now if you hit mask and you hit add you have this now of course the mask we will definitely scale that down so this is the part where we're going to start to edit just a little bit so half of his body will not be distorted so we get that ideal look but <clears throat> we also want to make a bigger, you know, mask so that when his arms are moving we don't have to mask path a lot. So we'll keep the mask about here and we have this look. Now the feather, we don't want to have it as much, so hit 20 to get that look. Now of course if you turn this back on, it won't show anything. But if you actually go into, you can use turbulent displace to distort the footage you distort it just a tiny bit, so let's turn down the size. And you untoggle the mask, you can see your effect. If you turn back on the energy force field, you can see he is distorted, which is a really, really, really cool effect because we have this. Now, of course, we can, you know, also do this, turn off the turbulent displace, add a displacement map, making this the background layer. And basically he is already distorted like that. So with the mask and stuff like that. But if we actually act it towards the first force field and we give it a little bit of this, you see there's distortion right there and stuff like that. Now, of course, that's not the best one, so let's just keep it at turbulent displace. 
Now here we're going to have to figure out some settings. So let's tune the size amount down to 20 and for this amount we want to, you know, maybe actually keep this at 17 to make this size this, okay? So 17 on both. Now you want to keyframe, so go to the very end of this and you just want to maybe make this. So every time the size, you know, goes up, you want to just mess around with the amount because you don't want it to be like this where it's completely distorted. So hit U on your keyboard you have about here. Let's go about every two seconds where we change it up so we get more of that feeling. Let's tune down the size just a little bit and let's get more distortion like this. Now of course this distortion effect looks cool and if we actually untoggle the keyframe, keep it at 80, this actually is <laughs> actually found a really really nice distortion towards this. So you can see here that the force field is distorting the body which is very very nice and of course you turn it off you see this you see this and of course there's distortion outside the middle in order to fix that I mean we can make our mask just a little bit inside and just bring it in just a little bit more stuff like that and if we hit F on the keyboard change it to 30 instead of 20 to make that and if we go out of it we have this now lastly what we need to do is animate the force field um, turning on. So, this is what we do. First of all, turn off the force field out there, okay? We have this. We want to make that effect where he is literally making this force field turn on. So, you can either use a linear wipe, which you just have to type in linear, go down to transition, and you see this, and change the point like this to maybe this type of degree and do that. Now of course we can do that and if we actually hit 90 degrees it'll go this way. But if we turn it a little sideways to around you know this much and feather it a lot, so about 50, and we keyframe this then we'll get this effect. So you actually want to start off at 100 for the transition completion. Maybe let's make the force field fast. So let's go to 5 frames after that. Hit U on the keyboard. Go to transition completion. Hit 0. And we have this. And with the feathering, it looks good. Okay. So what we want to do is, the reason why we use this is because now we can go to edit copy, go to the force field creation, edit, paste, and we have the exact same thing duplicated without having to do it twice. And if we go out of here and we turn everything back on, this is what we get. Now of course the distortion, we actually, first of all before we um, hit play, we want the distortion to start about one to two frames before this goes on. So as basically as the force field turns on, it'll start to be distorted. So all you have to do is go into your movie and mask path it. So basically let's go to the end here, let's complete like this and hit mask path so we have every all the settings changed. So let's go about here. What you want to do is then undistort it because this is the part where he is not being distorted because the force field is not affecting him. And so go back every frame and basically what you want to do bring this all out so these keyframes won't matter and we'll bring about to here where the hand is and this part is where the whole thing is disappeared so let's highlight that bring out and we have this. So let's go frame by frame so you just start to see. Now of course this distortion we actually want to fix that because we don't want it to be sorting that so all you have to do is do this. Take this one bring it to the very very edge right here fix it just a little bit 
zoom in, and all we have to do is just fix it until we get a small distortion. So the distortion is not affecting the whole thing. And if we toggle the mask on, we see this, then we see this, and then we see this, and it's all better. Now we go out, and we see this, it's all like that. So you see my computer here is about to die, so I'm going to hit play real quick. Um, so that we can see basically what we have done so far. So let's hit play. Now, of course it goes super fast, so what we do here is, this is why we always, you know, edit, editing stuff always takes forever. Hit you on the keyboard, go to the end keyframes of the... Hmm, Transition completion and mask path. So go to each of these, hit command, think, nope. Oops, okay. Go to this one, hit shift, hit shift again on all of them. Then go out, and we can see that they're highlighted blue. So maybe let's make these a little further apart. Hit play again. And you can see here it's a little bit slower, which is good because we get that ideal look. Distortions happen. Again, if we do that, we want to actually um, then undo these ones. Hit U on the keyboard for this. U on the keyboard. And like I said, now that we have it over here, we want to take all of these. Go to here, bring it all the way up, and we see here. So then, when it's coming up, so let's find this and move them to here. Maybe move them just back. Okay, then we have this. So now the distortion is connected, and we have this as our final. And of course, it's feathered out and it looks perfect. I really hope you guys like this tutorial. And again, if you want to see the advanced version, you can go ahead and check that out on Monday, January 25th. Um, I also will be having lots of other tutorials based on the My Fantastic Four video, like fire, um, like how did it put your arms on fire and stuff like that. Lots and lots of tutorials and stuff. Um, but anyways, just... Go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos. Like my videos, share them, you know, comment them. If you ever want me to edit something, all you have to do is send the video to my email. Make sure it's at least under 200 megabytes, like under that. And if you want me to edit it again, then I will do that. So my email is in the description below. You can check that out. Hope you guys really enjoy this tutorial, and goodbye, guys.